Hi everybody, it's Jennifer McCreeth, June 5th. It's 5th of the 4th. Do we, ever, do we ever establish what day it was? It's Sunday, we know that. We just watched the, the Men's French Open final. And of course that happens the first Sunday of every June. And we've been glued to that TV. How many years have we been watching this now? My goodness, quite a few. And uh, part one of my video, we were just getting into how I turned the TV on and watched tennis and it just brings me right back to 1992 when that's pretty much all I did if I wasn't in the classroom or at work at my part-time job I was out on a tennis court from early in the spring right till the late fall and uh, it's funny yesterday I was watching was it yesterday or Friday the infamous John Isner Nicholas Mahu video the match that went 11 hours I kind of skimmed through it I didn't sit through the whole thing but Again, it brought back watching Isner struggle after seven hours of tennis. Here we go again. I mean, what's going on here? I'm just going to let that ring because uh, I don't know what happened there. But we're going to keep talking because I don't want to keep starting and stopping the video. Shut up! And that's just a landline. I'm glad I don't have a cell phone. It's getting tougher and tougher to survive in the world without a cell phone because there's this expectation that everyone has one. We don't. I don't. But yeah, my goodness. Well, let's take a quick peek at my uh, predictions there. Iga Swiatek versus the field. That was the big question. Pretty easy to say, okay, I'll pick Swiatek. Still, you got to go out and win seven matches. I don't care if you're the favorite. You still got to play the matches. You still got to win. You got to avoid injury. Anything can go wrong. Look at Zverev. If it wasn't for that ankle injury, Nadal might not have made the finals today. And then there's my pick. I, I went with Alcaraz. I guess he wasn't quite ready for prime time. But uh, you know what? There's a lot of competition out there. The big three. Switching to the men, of course. Nadal won today. 22 majors. 20 years ago. Pete Sampras won his 14th major. And people are like, nobody's ever going to win 14. Nadal's got 14 French Opens, not to mention multiple titles at the other majors. Then there's two other guys right behind him, Federer and Djokovic. So not only is Nadal winning 22 majors, he's doing it in an era where there's two other people winning just as many, which makes it three times as tough. Who does Sampras have to beat or, or compete against? There's always the clay court specialist back then. Okay, this is really getting out of hand. Just throw that over there, because I'm just not in the mood to talk right now on the phone. It's also interesting. Everyone loved Agassi, including me, and everyone hated Sampras. But I modeled my game and my style Stoic attitude, focus on the courts. That's Pete Sampras. Agassi was more fluorescent and flamboyant. I don't think his head was always in the game. If you read Agassi's book, you know his head wasn't always in the game. The guy was more worried about his toupee than playing tennis. That's why he lost the French Open final in 1990. Now it all makes sense. There's no way he should have lost that match. But he did. He's serving volley. Servant volley? Anybody servant volley out there anymore? One thing COVID has hurt has been the grass court seasons. Wimbledon got cancelled and there's just not a lot of grass court tennis tournaments. Now we've got an issue with, I guess, world political events interfering in tennis. And all because of, because of a war, certain athletes will not be allowed to play in Wimbledon. It's not really fair. I get that people feel they have to do something or make a statement, and I guess that's what Wimbledon's doing. This whole other side issue, this Wimbledon just won't be the same without one, they took away the ranking points, and two, Russians and Belarusians will not be allowed to play. I don't think Andre Rublev and Daniel Medvedev had anything to do with the with Putin's decisions. Neither did uh, Arena Sabalenka or 
Victoria Azarenka for that matter. It is what it is. I don't really know what to make of it. I just I question if Wimbledon will be as important this year. There'll be a lot of good players that won't be there. And yet another year without solid grass court tennis. Is it crazy to think that Rafael Nadal might actually be the favorite to win Wimbledon this year? All these other players are good. They're catching up to them. But they're clay quarters. Zverev, Tsitsipas, Alcaraz, Rude. What have they ever done on grass? Nothing. Okay, Djokovic, probably considered the favorite, even though he hasn't played a lot of tennis this year. Or last year. The vaccine, deciding not to get vaccinated, has cost him access to a lot of tennis matches. And he's been rusty. Nadal has won Wimbledon twice. How many other active players have done that? Andy Murray? Yeah, but he's kind of past his prime. Federer? I don't think he's even going to play it. Yeah, Djokovic has won, what, six Wimbledon? Seven? But you just don't know. If Nadal wins three Wimbledons? Wow, that would be amazing. I keep getting thrown off my train of thought here. And, uh... I don't even remember what this video is supposed to be about, so we're going to turn the camera off. How's that?